Hi, this is Dave Klein, producer and host of Raptor Adventures. In this episode, we are going out to sea 105 miles out to the Hudson Canyon on the Big Jamaica 125 foot fishing vessel. Now we'll be going out with people that I've never met before. And some of them know each other from past trips and some of them don't know each other at all. And that's kind of the fun of it. You know, you make new friends while you're out there and you have great adventures on the high seas. We're going for yellowfin tuna and maybe some mackerel today. So let's see how it unfolds. The trip was scheduled to leave at 9.30 p.m. The ship is based in Brielle, New Jersey, and we'll be going out to sea from the Point Pleasant Inlet. So I got there early and just checking out the sights and looking at some of the beautiful boats in the marina, getting real anxious. When I look down in the clear water at the marina, and what do I see? But mating horseshoe crabs. <laughs> so a little action, first thing <laughs> on the trip. And you know, the horseshoe crabs are amazing because they really do date back to prehistoric times. They are like a living fossil and their blue blood is studied by scientists around the world looking for possible cures for all kinds of ailments that human beings suffer. So you gotta respect these animals. They've been around for millions of years and I always love seeing them in their natural habitat. Well, as the afternoon turns into evening, it's now about nine o'clock and they're doing the roll call to get all of the folks who signed up to go out to sea, chase after the yellowfin and the mackerel on board the big Jamaica. And here's how that goes. Okay, Mr. Klein, so now we're on board and you had the option to sign up for a bunk in the below deck bunk room. And here's what that looks like. <laughs> we're all getting to know each other really well down in there. And you know what? It's a pretty neat scene. You can spend your time during nighttime when you're heading out to sea down there in the bunk room, where you can go up on the first part of the deck and check out what's up there. There's people up there with food. People bring all kinds of great things in coolers and such. And let's take a little tour around the first deck of the big Jamaica. See what it looks like. And then we'll pop outside and see what the outside of the ship looks like. But you know, not a bad place to spend almost a 24 hour stretch at sea. And so finally, after getting comfortable inside the vessel, it's time to put out to sea and we're now headed toward the Point Pleasant Inlet. In this case, we're headed out into the Atlantic Ocean toward the Hudson Canyon with high hopes of great fish stories to be told, yet to be made ahead. Let's go out the inlet together. Once we clear the inlet, the captain gets a chance to fire up the engines and really get her flying. And that's an exciting part of these trips. I love to hear the power that these ships can churn into the water. And man, we were moving. Next stop, up to the captain's chambers and let's meet the captain for the first time. So, I mean, here we are in the wheelhouse. It's nighttime and uh, we'll catch up with our captain in the morning because you can't really I see can. him now. Uh, hi, Captain. Hi. So, thank you for letting me up here. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, thank you for getting us through the night safely. We'll see you in the morning, all right? Great. All see right, very cool. Hopefully the fish will bite. The reason I didn't turn a light on in there so you could see the captain better is there was a big fog, a big mist out on the water, and it would have blinded him. So for safety's sake, we didn't do that. But we'll meet him in the morning. Meanwhile, it's now late at night, getting into the early morning. And I thought we'd take a look at some of the chunkin' bait that we'll use. We'll throw that out with scoops to attract the yellowfin tuna. 
maybe even a bluefin tuna. And then we're also going to use some herring. This is what the herring looks like. It comes boxed. And we're also going to use another very common fish off the Jersey Shore, and these are butterfish. And a little while later in the film, I'll show you how you rig those on your hook and what the setup looks like that we're fishing with. I noticed around 11.15, guys started dropping off the upstairs, started getting quiet, and guys were disappearing. So I figured those that rented their bunks were already downstairs in the lower deck bunk room. So I went down around 11.30. And by that time, we were hitting some 8-foot seas. Now it's a 125-foot long vessel, so it was cutting through them pretty good. But every once in a while, there'd be a pretty good bump that would give you, like, zero gravity, kind of lift you out of your bunk. <laughs> but um, it was 3.30 in the morning when I took this, and all was quiet and all was well. So everybody in there was all settled in and waiting for the next day. And on the next day, the very first thing we saw is this amazing fish called an ocean sunfish. Somebody said in the early morning, it was about 5.30 in the morning, oh my gosh, look at that, what is that? And somebody said, a thresher shark. And then somebody else said, no, it's a sunfish. And then somebody else called it by its real name, which is a mola. It swam right up to the starboard side of the ship and then leaped out of the water. What a great beginning to the day. Next up, we were greeted by the ever-present throughout the trip that day, great shearwater birds. These are birds that have some of the longest migrating patterns up and down North and South America of any bird. Okay, so Captain Howard's got us out here on the big Jamaica. How far offshore are we, Captain? We're 105 miles from Brielle. 105 miles from Brielle. Wow, let me get myself steady here. And uh, so right now we're trolling, trolling right. for tuna. Gotcha. Yeah, normally we don't troll. Uh, this time of year we're usually fishing 50 to 70 miles offshore, but this year the fish haven't shown up in there yet. So uh -huh. we're out in the canyon, and uh, what we're going to do is troll till we get some bites and then stop and chunk and try jigging and baiting. And uh, hopefully we'll get some that way. And each move we're just putting the trolling lines out to see if we can hook a couple up. And, so far, we've only been trolling a few minutes and we've already hooked two fish up, so. Well, that makes as much sense as it could possibly make, I guess. You find them first and then you drop for them, right? Right. Can you tell us a little bit about the vessel? Yeah, it's, uh, it was built in 1977. We've actually repowered twice, so we have new uh, John Deere engines in the boat. They're a few years old. Uh, it's 125 feet long, 30 foot beam. I've been on the boat since 1981 full time, and my family's been in Brielle since 1931, so we've been uh, wow. fishing a long time. So this is your way of life. What is the wildest or craziest, the most unusual thing you've ever seen out here? <laughs> a mermaid. Probably, probably <laughs> we were on our way to the canyon one time, and we saw a turtle on top, and when we got next to it, there was a shark that was eating it. Oh my gosh. I've only seen that once. That was the one time. In, I was in a hurry to get to the canyon, so we didn't stop and video it, and uh, never saw that again. Yeah, we saw a big old sunfish out here first thing this morning when we went out. I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not. Yeah, no, we've been seeing quite a few sunfish. There's some whales out here, too. And wow. Dolphin. He jumped out of the water. I didn't even know that fish could jump out of the water. Yes, they don't Pretty look like amazing. they could. Right. All right, well, I really appreciate you giving us some of your time and effort. So right now we're going after tuna. Any particular species? Uh, we'll probably also catch yellowfin today. Sometimes okay. on these trips we get bluefin and yellowfin, but right now there's a yellowfin in the area. Okay. All right, Captain. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Is this what you had out there? Ah. I'm going to get one too. Do While I was up talking to Captain Howard, they trolled in the first couple of yellowfin tuna, gorgeous fish. Here's a little warning, if you're faint of heart, there is gonna be blood shown in this episode. And that's because the tuna are gaffed to make sure that they get into the boat and that makes them bleed. Tuna have a lot of blood. So it's just all part of it, but they're dispatched as yeah. humanely as possible. And then they make for some delicious eating, some of the best you'll ever have. Now turn here towards me. Without question, the trolling was absolutely producing results. So we set five to six lines out the stern of the boat and we trolled. 
and you troll and troll and we'd have different rigs on there rigs that resembled squid that's what one of these looked like as it cuts through the water later on in the day it was starting to attract the great shearwater birds that we saw earlier uh it was comical at times <laughs> and i don't want to give anything away so that's all i'll say about that but here you go fish on This lot here, yeah, when you first put it on, I thought oh. something was on it. trolling run ended successfully and so now we are going to go ahead and drift fish and to do that we're going to rig up a butterfish and this is how you rig up a butterfish you basically have to get the butterfish's mouth open they've been frozen so sometimes you might have to you know give it a little kiss or rub it between your hands and warm it up <laughs> but you basically put the hook through the butterfish's mouth and then what you want to do is you want to come out the gill right like this. Okay, and once you're out the gill, you pull a little bit of line through and then you turn that hook and you put that hook right back inside of the butterfish's gill plate there, okay? See, I'm gonna hook that hook up inside the gill plate there back into the body of the butterfish and then I'm gonna pull out the slack and that way there's no hook sticking out, nothing to scare off the tuna, nothing that seems unnatural. as the birds were making their presence known we only had one other visitor all day long we only saw one other ship and that was this Grimaldi lines vessel and it was magnificent out there in the water some of the waves were cresting at what we estimated to be like 14 feet and they were pounding but the big Jamaica at her 125 foot length could handle it just fine so we sailed right on by the Grimaldi lines freighter thinking to ourselves, gee, I wonder what it's like to sail the open seas on a ship like that for days or months at a time. Must be pretty interesting life. And I wonder about all the things they see while they're out there on the big, wide, vast ocean. You know how I've been saying the birds were part of the action? Well, that guy we just saw, Sean, he caught a bird and we gently released it. And then I caught a bird. They were diving down after the butterfish. And so you gotta let them go. I think it's my first time to wrangle bird. Can you get your picture? Rolling? Alright. Doing some catching birds. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, they have beaks. That's right. In truth, it was really interesting to hold a great shearwater bird. They live their lives out at sea. They go inland only in their rookeries and they migrate these thousands and thousands of miles. 
but they spend the rest of their time as pelagic birds. They come out and they look for vessels like ours. Cruising along, they're looking for some of the guts or the offal of the fish when they're clean, or maybe some of the bait chunking that we're doing. And they were diving down for our herring and our butterfish. And uh, they were comical and interesting and at the same time, uh, fun to watch. And I think that's an interesting part of being out there. Meanwhile, here we go, another fish on. This method of trolling, as you're seeing here, was actually the most successful for us. We trolled some plugs, but I think the rigs that imitated little schools of squid uh, were the most effective. As a matter of fact, uh, a couple of the tuna that we caught spit up some squid, and that's what they were feasting on. It's always good to check and see uh, if you're interested what the fish are actually eating on that day. This gives you a little view of the wave action there, up and down, up and down. And while we had some time, this reminded me of a trip just 10 months ago I took with my son out on another vessel, only about 40 miles offshore out of Point Pleasant. And on this vessel, the Tail Chaser, we were out there all day long. And in the last 15 minutes, we hooked up with a blue fin. And this is a flashback of what it looked like. <laughs> you have one too? You have one too? Oh, really We're just getting that line out of the water for you. I mean that was a, yeah that was a different hit than the than the album than the first three. You tired yet? A little bit. And he's staying down too. You tired yet? I know. I see I see that sectoral. I mean that. Uh, Bicep and tricep work in there. Good thing you do your push ups. <laughs> yeah, man, that really hit like a freight train. How's that feel? Like you got anything on there? Okay. <laughs> like 40 minutes now maybe even 45 fish is still a good 15 feet below you can see him though he's silvery green down in there <laughs> really if you can what you got left Dane Yeah, he's 
He's making he's he's making big circles now. How we doing, Captain Steve? All right. See that color out there? That's the fish. Still, still not ready. Yeah, we turned. Yeah, I saw it. He turned on his side, got another breath, and went under like a little submarine there. You can almost see him. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but man, what a beautiful, what a beautiful fish. He, who's getting tired? Dane? Or you? How's your arm doing? You know, working the throttles and stuff. Yeah? Okay. Good thing you work out there, Captain Steve. Okay, we're about 50 minutes into this now. And the pitch is going to come See him down there. There's the spreader bar came out of the water. There you go, you're gaining on him again. You're doing good. Then you're doing good. A little bit at a time. Better to do that than try to yank it up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at the reflection of that fish. He's just making big old clockwise circles now. It's what we want? Good. Oh. oh boy, this is so hit or miss. He just wanted to get this fish in, in the boat. And he's not having a mind to get in the boat yet. So Dane's got to like six inches at a time, reeling him in on each circle. Look at his color. Oh my gosh, that fish pulled that spreader bar back under. Rigs out of the water again. Reel, reel, reel. Oh, rigs back in the water.
the stack. Whoa! 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 Look at that! And there you have one of my favorite bluefin tuna flashback moments. Special thanks to mate Jack and Captain Steve. Look at the beautiful fillets that came off of that tuna. I mean, we were sitting there at the dock eating it like sushi. It was fabulous. Took it home, sliced it up into some nice steaks, and then vacuum packed it, and we ate it for about a year. And that's splitting it among two families. Meanwhile, back on the big Jamaica, let me show you how to bait up a herring for yellowfin tuna. A herring is a little more delicate than the butterfish, but we use the same technique. We put the hook through the mouth of the herring, just like that, and then we gently thread it in there and up through the gill plate, just like we did with the butterfish. It's the same exact procedure. But again, these are a little more delicate, they crush easier, and so you have to just kind of take it easy. So you thread it out through there, and then you're gonna wanna come back around and try to bury that hook inside the body of the herring so that it has a natural presentation that the tuna doesn't suspect that anything's wrong and that it's not doing anything but eating an unsuspecting herring and having a good meal. Once you get that through, you thread it up, and there you have it, you're ready to go. Now, while most of us were off the starboard side drift fishing, some ingenious guys got some little chunks of fish and threw some double rigs out and got into some mackerel. Sweet! Yeah, nice mackerel. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. You just caught them. Wow. What'd you catch them on? Butterfish. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. As we pull up this last yellowfin tuna for this episode i want to say thanks to everybody aboard the big jamaica we had a great time out there 105 miles out over the hudson canyon looking forward to going out next time thanks a lot this is dave klein i hope you enjoyed the episode tune in again sometime and i'll see you when the fish are on